Hello YouTube, this is ArchBear76 um, talking about CCSVI and Dr. Zamboni's liberation procedure. Some questions have come to mind that you may be thinking um, that I've definitely been thinking. So uh, I've had a huge response on the two videos that I've done. Um, I've tried to get back to everybody with comments or whatever, but if I miss something, please forgive me. Um, but it's been a whirlwind for me for the last, I'd say, five or six days with getting the information together to do the video and whatever. So um, the questions that I think a lot of people are going to have is, like, for example, I, I had read about a Canadian doctor really downplaying Dr. Zamboni's research and uh, uh, kind of taking the air out of the room, the, say, uh, w the wind out of the sails of people, MS sufferers who have a lot of hope and faith. Don't lose hope and faith. You have to understand this. Um, you need to ask yourself one question when you look at this neurologist, any neurologist that, that wants to downplay Dr. Zamboni's findings. You need to say, do you really believe that the science isn't good or is it because you didn't catch it? Because it's not a neurological, uh, a neurologist didn't find it, okay? First off, the man that found this, this link, I think primarily found it because his wife has the disease and I think he went above and beyond. Secondly, what his knowledge base is, is not neurology. Um, it's cardiovascular surgery. So that's something he knows. And um, I think it was uh, serendipitous for him t to be a doctor in that field and who's, for his wife to come down with that. Um, and me and Not Applicable 66 have always said, it'll either be someone with MS or someone with someone, or someone with someone they love who has MS that would cure it. And although it's not a cure, I, I do want to, um, yeah, I do want to add some stuff. Um, first question is, how could neurology mess it very easily? You go to school as a doctor, uh, as, if you want to be a general practitioner and just family practice or whatever, um, that's, you have to know a lot about a lot of diseases. Um, but when you go into a specialty, you have to know everything about your, uh, about diseases that fit into your speciality. And um, that's how it got missed. Neurologists only were looking at the central nervous system and how it how it corresponded with other body systems, but they didn't look in depth, I think, into the cardiovascular. Because once they got uh, uh, the autoimmunity, once they figured out that the autoimmunity is happening, they tried to figure out why and the only thing they could come up with was a virus so and i do think a virus is i'm still implicated in there a, a family of herpes viruses uh herpes 6 herpes 9 um epstein bar um because i'll digress because i'm gonna hit that later but that's how neurology messed it okay there's neurology specialty is the nervous system and they weren't looking in the veins so instead of you know meeting Zamburn, zamboni's research with resistance, just hear him out um, and try to make it applicable to what, you, to what you're doing. Um, so that's how neurology missed it. So, but instead of saying, oh, we missed it, it took a cardiovascular guy to really see something, they're kind of, you know, resisting it a little bit more. And so the question is, the autoimmune paradigm that we have now, does it fit with Dr. Zamboni's research? Absolutely. Um, Lots of things can cause an autoimmune response. Obviously, it's in the iron deposits. Iron is toxic in high uh, amounts, especially in the brain. And um, the interesting thing about iron is iron is part, like with anemia, as you know, with iron deficiency anemia, iron has plays a big role in uh, in, uh, in blood cells um, carrying oxygen and whatever. And it has a lot to do with this, the uh, chronic fatigue syndrome with... Uh, multiple sclerosis, this, this iron uh, problem. And as iron, car iron carries uh, through the blood hemoglobin, all kinds of other things, but it also carries Epstein-Barr virus or her uh, certain herpes simplex viruses. So the, the immune system is not only seeing the iron in the inflammation, but it's seeing, you know, whatever little devils like... <laughs> Epstein-Barr or whatever stuff that you could have had years ago. So I think it adds to the autoimmune process. I think the autoimmune process is basically how our 
immune system respond there there's several things have to go wrong for a plane to crash it's not just one thing usually it's usually a series of unfortunate things that happen when a when a plane crashes and that's how it is with ms um neurology still has its place it just isn't the ball's been moved to another court uh, cardiovascular surgery um it can very well re reverse the disease now um we're still going to have people i have heard people say well if they cure ms then the the doctors the neurologist will be out of a job or whatever we have to remember there's still going to be some permanent disability and there's still going to be the disability scales and and still have to ascertain where you're at so to say that they're, that they're going to resist it because they're out of a job it's a little conspiracy theory of us to say that right now because there's still going to be a lot of, of jobs in MS um, even if this is the cure because <laughs> there's going to be permanent damage there's going to be disability and there are they're still researching ways to um, to bring dead axons back to life through stem cells so there's still a lot of money to be made in MS even if they cure it I just wanted to add that um, before we uh, took it away now bit now the pharmaceutical companies are going to take a hit and they'll be probably the biggest ones resisting it um, but and how, how CCSVI fits with autoimmunity it causes it so there's still the autoimmune process there's still um, Tysabri is still going to work against the autoimmune process the whole thing is if they reverse the the damage being done um, then the uh, autoimmune process m may not get triggered uh, especially not as frequently so that's pretty cool that's how neurology missed it and that's kind of how iron fits in with the fatigue and the toxicity at certain levels um, and uh, iron is kind of the it was a huge thing that I missed in my research um, and not applicable 66 a friend of mine on YouTube has also said it would have really painted a different picture of MS for all of us but uh, it being back on that whole, you know, this being outside of the box, um, risks for MS severity. This is why this whole CCSVI, where I said everything fits, I literally mean everything fits. Um, why all of a sudden Lipitor was helping people with MS? Well, it was helping with the cholesterol that was around the stricture, which was making the stricture tighter, therefore the MS worse. Um, smoking. Uh, I smoke a pipe, and they, t and they tell you not to smoke, you know, if you have MS, and I kind of, it's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. It makes perfect sense. Everyone knows the research about what, what smoking does to your cardiovascular health. Smoking constricts blood vessels, peripheral blood vessels like in your fingers and your toes, but it also constricts ma major veins and arteries. So you, you it compound your, your problem. High cholesterol uh, would compound it. Um, stress. Stress. Stress causes you know your blood pressure to rise. And the higher your blood pressure is, the more force it puts on the on the vessel walls. Um, vasodilation or or dilating the the blood vessels would be very helpful. Um, and treating it until you can get that. Um, sleep apnea. That's another thing. We're, you're going to see a case of someone at some point, I'm sure, with CCSVI that doesn't have any kind of problem with their. Uh, with their veins I'm sure we're, there's going to be an anomaly and I do believe sleep apnea plays a, a part in MS um, loud snoring quitting breathing in the middle of the night does essentially the same thing as backing the blood up in us in a stricture so even if they don't have CCSVI and they have MS you can't rule out the the uh, chance of sleep apnea if you're constantly doing what they call Valsalva's maneuver where you bear down and your in your face gets red if you're doing that in your sleep you're going to have basically the same thing of the blood regurgitating back up into the brain. So um, there are a lot of things that can cause that uh, that regurgitation, like uh, straight straining or whatever. So you're going to see um, little pieces here and there fit in to the puzzle. Now um, I'm going to stop this video and just continue on on another video um, to kind of get some of these thoughts out and organized. If I repeat myself, I apologize. Uh, but I've got a lot of stuff going on up here, so stay tuned for part two, and uh, God bless.